Willkommen alle zusammen. It crossed my mind that I've had this channel for two and a half years now and I have not done a timeline video. And this can be confusing to the new people because if you read or watch videos on history and you don't have a clear understanding of the timeline and the culture of the time, it can give you a completely misguided idea of the actual historical events and why these events actually happened. The Viking Age was more than 250 years and that is a very long time where a lot of changes can happen in society. Only when we know the timeline and the culture at the time will we get a full picture and start to really understand these things about history that may seem strange to us. So that's what we're talking about in this video and I hope people can see some parallels to today and learn a thing or two. So let's start right at the year zero. This is what I like to call the Germanic Tribal Age when the Roman Empire was at its peak and the Germanic tribes were giving them hell. These tribes were basically the ancestors of the Vikings and all the other Germanic peoples in the world today. This was 800 years before the Viking Age though, and the only reason I speak about it in this Viking Age timeline is because this was a time where we all had one religion, one language, the Proto-Germanic language, we had one culture, although at the time they would have never admitted that. They were very separated and sometimes warring tribes, but we were essentially one people at the time and somewhat united against Roman or Celtic hostile invasions. And you know, this is hundreds of years before the Viking Age. Fast forward 800 years and these Germanic peoples had separated into much larger unified kingdoms. The Anglo-Saxons, the Frisians, the Franks, just to name a couple, and the people of Scandinavia on the other hand, they did consider themselves unified territories of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. But they were not unified nations yet, and they had many different tribes and small kingdoms actually still, kind of like the Germanic tribal era of hundreds of years ago. This leads us to the Saxon and Frisian Wars, when the Franks got themselves an emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Emperor Charlemagne, and he committed the atrocities on the last pagans of mainland Europe. It was a very long and hard war, but eventually Charlemagne was able to win over the Saxons and Frisians and convert them to Christianity. The Saxons and Frisians were before this followers of the same religion of the Scandinavians of the time. They were friends, they were trading partners, and even family, closely related possibly. They did not live very far from one another and would have had close relations. The Danes would have seen and heard about the atrocities committed on their pagan Saxon and Frisian brothers, and they did not want this aggressive expansion by the Holy Roman Empire to continue into Denmark. So, this brings us to the Viking Age. The start of the Viking Age is commonly marked by the raid on Lindisfarne in the year 793. Now, all European cultures raided at this time and long before them, but the Viking raids is when it started to get larger, more organized, and they traveled much further. And they thought, okay, why not target the Catholic Church who had been massacring and stealing from pagans for hundreds of years now? So that's exactly what they did. The first raids in the first decades were purely against monasteries and religious sites as retaliation for the acts of Charlemagne and other rulers around Europe. And it was also prevention from the Holy Roman Empire gaining the power and wealth to push up further into Scandinavia and do the same things that they did in Frisia and Saxony. A lot of historians are maybe not going to want to admit this, but I will do another video on it because I think there is plenty of evidence there to make this the most likely uh, reality. I will admit though, these Viking raids maybe started out as something justifiable in the first few decades of the Viking Age, but there were definitely some Vikings who went a little bit overboard after that. Especially in the mid-800s, Europe absolutely turned into the Wild West. It was fair game for pretty much anyone, anywhere to get raided and have their family slaughtered and village burned down. So these few decades is actually where we hear the stories of the most brutal Viking raids coming from. The Swedes, for example, went into the east of Europe and they raided without mercy. 
The Danes had massive raids in England and even invaded with their great heathen army. The Danes also absolutely ravaged Francia. Now, Francia is really the place that got the worst out of all the raids by far. The winter raids of 881 really laid waste to every town in their path. So the Danes, they were definitely the most organized on the largest scale and did the most damage. But the Norwegians were the worst. The Norwegians raided places like Ireland and Scotland and England, but the worst was actually the wild bands of Vikings that raided their own people in Norway. Many of them set up base in the northern Scottish Isles and used this as kind of like an outlaw's territory and that's where they committed these raids on their home neighbors in Norway. This is actually where the stories of the traditional Viking raids come from, of just killing everyone, taking the women as slaves, and burning down the whole village in these decades is when it happened. Yes, of course, raids happened during the whole Viking Age, but the most brutal, uh, destructive ones that we all hear about, they really only took place in these 30-40 years in the mid-800s. This came to an end, though, at the pretty much same time everywhere. In Norway, the great king Harald Fairhair in the year 875 annexed the Scottish Isles, where all the worst outlaws were setting up their base and raiding from, and he set up governing chieftains to bring some law and order to that place, so it was peaceful in Norway and the Scottish Isles too. The Swedes in the east of Europe also calmed down their raiding on the native Slavs there around the 870s, and that's when the Swedish chieftains Rurik and after Oleg became princes of Novgorod and Kiev in the east and they also calmed down the raiding Swedes to improve relations with the Slavic nobles in the region. The Danes also calmed things down once they started to become friends with the Frankish and the English and the Frisian rulers. The Danish king Guthrum and the English king Alfred agreed and set up a treaty which would give the Danes control of a large part of England and that happened in the 880s. This is called the Dane Law. The Danes were also given territory in northern France. This is when Rollo was officially named a Duke of Normandy as you all know. And the Norwegians also discovered Iceland around the late 800s, so the ones that weren't getting along with King Harald Fairhair back home, they got their own space to go to as well in Iceland. And what followed after this was a period of a relatively peaceful time. Now what a lot of people get wrong about these periods here is that the Vikings who had settled in the east or in Normandy or in England, they all became Christian right away, and that is a load of shit. <laughs> Just because your king officially gets baptized does not mean all the people just change their beliefs right away. No, this takes many generations, so there would have been pagans and Christians living in all these areas together in peace. So we were never enemies, the Christians and the pagans. In fact, Christian and pagan kings were often great friends and respected each other, such as the Norwegian Harald Fairhair and the English king Athelstan, who fostered Harald's son Håkon, my favorite Viking king who ever lived, Håkon the Good, and he was a Christian, and he came back to Norway to rule, and the people loved him there too. So the two religions were absolutely not enemies, as it is depicted in many TV shows and movies. The only enemy is this philosophy of forcing your beliefs on other people, just like Charlemagne tried to do at the beginning of the Viking Age, but in the mid-Viking Age we had almost a hundred years of relative peace. But, guess what happens then? More Christians trying to force their beliefs on others, and then that leads to more brutal wars and violence. It started with the Saxon Emperor Otto, who tried to forcefully convert the Danes. Some sources say he did it peacefully, and some say he did it by war. But that basically led the Danish king Hado Bluetooth to cowardly convert around the 970s and forced upon his people and the Norwegians who he was ruling over at the time too, because they had no king. And then, 
when we had the horrible Norwegian king Olav Tryggvason in the 990s and he was torturing and massacring anyone who didn't want to convert to Christianity. Then we also had the St. Bryce's Day Massacre in England in the year 1002, which was ordered by the English king Ethelred, and it slaughtered possibly thousands of Danes living in England for no other reason than that they were pagan, and also they groomed themselves and they were gentlemanly, so they were able to charm the English noble women, as it says in one source. And then another one, about 20 years later, we had the Norwegian king Olav Haraldsson, who did the same thing and massacred anyone in Norway who wanted to remain pagan. So, what happens after all that? Well, same as before. You want to use violence to force your beliefs on the wonderful people of Northern Europe? It will end up turning around and biting you in the ass. The Norwegian pagan chieftain Håkon the Jarl was the first responder to this aggression. He drove back Emperor Otto and the Saxons. He also fought off every attack from Harald Bluetooth who tried to do the same. The pagan prince Svein Forkbeard took back the Danish throne from his father Harald Bluetooth and he also helped the Norwegians and the Jarl Eirik Håkonarsson regain control of Norway from the dictatorial rule of Olav Tryggvason. Then Svein Forkbeard and his son Knut the Great responded to the St. Bryce's Day massacre in England and led a massive invasion and actually became kings of all England for a certain time for a few years there. And finally, Olav Haraldsson's tyrannical rule also came to an end in the Battle of Stiklestad in the year 1030 when the pagan farmers stood up and took back their freedom. Guys, I hope you see the parallels to today. You see, it's not always about religion. In previously in history it might have been, but today it's something different. Certain new ideas have always been tried to be forced on the wonderful people of Europe and also the world. This happens everywhere. We can learn from it and stand up for ourselves and unite or be doomed to repeat the slavery that has happened previously in history. Anyway, it was another 40-ish years of relative peace after this, after the pagans took back control. All countries ruling themselves independently, but still relatively friendly with each other. And all the evidence suggests that the pagan religion was kind of outlawed officially in most places, but it wasn't really enforced, and people did their own thing. This brings us to the 1060s. There was some turmoil in the English ruling family, and Harald Godwinson was the one who ended up taking over the throne. The problem was, all the Viking kings, for one reason or another, thought that they had a claim to this English throne. So the Norwegian king Harald Hardrada was the first one to invade, but he was defeated at the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066. Shortly after, the Normans invaded and defeated the English and William the Conqueror gained the throne. And remember, William the Conqueror was a descendant of Jolo and the army was a descendant of the Vikings who had settled there 150 years ago. They were also officially Christian by this time, but they still kept many pagan beliefs and traditions. For example, they actually brought a witch with them to the Battle of England to cast curses on the English during their invasion. After that, there was a few years where the Danish king Svein II uh, led a campaign to invade England and take the throne, but they too were fought off by the new Norman English king William the Conqueror. And this brings us to the end of the Viking Age, guys, because that's officially when the raids ended and kind of when the threats from the Scandinavian uh, kings uh, stopped for good. But a lot of people equate that to also meaning that the Old Norse religion died out, but the reality is it lasted hundreds more years. It was just on the underground because it was made very illegal, but we have laws anywhere from the 13th to the 17th century that were written down and being enforced preventing old pagan practices and worship of the old gods. So people were still practicing this religion long after the Viking Age. But that's all for this video, hope that clears things up. You see, our ancestors were not just bloodthirsty, dumb barbarians. They were every bit as intelligent and civilized as us.
Only difference is, humans used to stand up for themselves when cruel acts were being done to them and when all their freedoms were being taken away. Sometimes, okay, they stood up against it and they took it a little bit too far, okay, <laughs> yeah, but so did their enemies. And generally, they were a people who preferred to live in a peaceful time and be friends with foreign nations, at least until someone comes along and does something bad to us. But that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this timeline and it sheds a little bit of light on the Viking Age. Lots more videos to come.